around in the world, and welcome to Cecil TV. This is 30 at 6, and it's February the 19th. We have a great show lined up tonight, and uh, before we get started, welcome Allison Donnelly. Hey, Rob. Great to see you, as always. Hello. The Cecil County Public Library's Small Business Information Center will host a Roadmap to Start a Nonprofit seminar on Monday, February 26th at 6 p.m. at the Elkton Library. To sign up, call 410-996-5600, extension 481. The 2018 Cecil County Ice Splash, which benefits the Cecil County Special Olympics, will take place this Saturday, February 24th from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Wellwood in Charlestown, Maryland. Are you going? Am I going? I always swim in the ice cold, <laughs> frigid water. At least I did once. But yes, I'm going, and I think Cecil TV is going to be there filming the event. Um, I've been at training, actually. Oh, so have you, have you been before to the Ice Splash? Well, yes, I went mm -hmm. virtually when we, I saw last year's show. <laughs> right. But I've been at training, I've been drinking lots of ice water. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard that's the best way to so prepare. I think that'll help. <laughs> Do you know how the weather will be? Well, if it's anything like we've had, there won't be any ice on the water, but I'm sure it'll be quite chilly. I think so, too. And they'll raise a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And now a 30 at 6 news update. With the January override of Governor Hogan's veto, the Maryland Healthy Working Families Act took effect on February 11th, 2018. For most employers and employees in Maryland, this means workers must be offered at least one hour of paid leave for every 30 hours worked. For further details, visit the Maryland Department of Labor Licensing and Regulations website. On February 13th, about 50 of your fellow citizens attended the County Executive's public hearing for citizen input. 13 people gave com comments either in support of continued investment in education and infrastructure or against any tax increases in fiscal year 2019. Cecil TV was on the scene. Hello, I'm Josh Deal of 30 at 6 here in Elkton for the County Executive's Town Hall for the fiscal year 2019 budget. Good evening, friends and fellow citizens. My name is Alan McCarthy. I'm the County Executive. And I want to personally thank each of you for attending this evening. I look forward to receiving and hearing your thoughts regarding the fiscal year 2019 budget for Cecil County. The county's fiscal stability was Dr. McCarthy's number one goal when sworn into office in December 2016. He was adamant that we must face the reality of what the cost of doing business is then fund it without using the county savings account. Thank you, Dr. McCarthy. The process is fairly simple this evening. Uh, everyone who has signed in will have three minutes to speak. Uh, when your name is called, please come to the front podium and you will uh, be able to speak uh, for a maximum of three minutes. The county public schools, the county college, the Cecil College, and the public library are the sturdy tripod of public education for our community. And that's in accordance with the strategic plan from the county. The executive and council have given our citizens opportunities to improve themselves individually through your support. These opportunities translate into attracting new businesses, new jobs, and more revenue. And I also hope that while you're crafting this budget, you consider that every additional tax dollar that is taken to move Cecil forward is one more dollar setting back working families when it's taken from them. Thank you. Hello, I'm Josh Deal of 30 at 6 here with Bob Willick. Bob. You're a 20-year resident of the county. What are your opinions on the idea of investment in the county versus the reduction of taxes? Uh, investment is always a great thing. Of course, there's the proper way to do it, which is spending within your means. Uh, as one person pointed out at this meeting tonight, uh, we've seen great benefits from tax cuts and employers giving out bonuses and businesses doing great things, as opposed to the old method of tax and spend and, and trying to get ahead that way while you're hurting the public who is strapped for cash as it is. Hello, I'm Josh Deal of 30 at 6 here with Dr. Jamie Daly, a former Cecil County Public Schools teacher and current professor at University of Delaware. Uh, Dr. Daly, could you just tell us a little bit about why the increases in the budget are worth it for investment in the county? Cecil County is a wonderful place to live. I've been here for a short time and I'm buying my first house and I'm thrilled that the taxes are so low. 
But the fact that they are going to invest in the infrastructure and most importantly, the education of our future leaders, most importantly, the Early Childhood Development Center of the future library in Northeast means that our investment will result in higher achievement, better jobs, invested parents, and I think a much more pleasant community. So I'm thrilled to be here. Hi, I'm Josh Steele of 30 at 6 here with Dr. Alan McCarthy. Uh, Dr. McCarthy, how do you think tonight went? Well, I think it went very well. We had a number of people here. We had 17 people responded, and they basically gave their honest opinions. And basically, I will take all of their opinions and their statements to consideration as I basically move forward with the budget. And when is that budget due? I'm going to turn it over to the council, I do believe, on March 30. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Alan McCarthy. Josh Deal, 30 at 6. Thank you. We won't get an official budget until it's released on March 30th, but until then, stay tuned. 30 at 6. I'm Josh Deal. Oh, oh no, the furnace is on the fridge again. This time I'm calling the movie. <laughs> wow, he's here already? At your service! <laughs> There you go! Mission accomplished! Ah, our house is nice and warm again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome! You're welcome! Just go to moonairinc.com! Hello, I'm here with Allie Charles. She's the Reader Services Librarian at Elkton Central Library. Allie, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for having me. So tell me what it means to be the Reader Services Librarian. Well, it's sort of the best job ever. <laughs> um, I do a lot of things at the Elkton Library, but my primary job is to help cultivate a community of readers um, in Cecil County. And some of the ways that I do that is by using what we call Reader's Advisory. Um, and that's a term librarians like to use. Basically, it means we want to get the best books in your hands. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do this in a variety of ways. We use um, book lists. We have our displays in the library, if you've ever seen them. Um, I started doing something called bookoscopes, mm -hmm. which are um, basically book horoscopes. So it's recommendations based on your um, astrological sign. Cool. Which is kind of a fun you know, fun, trendy thing that um, I've seen a lot of people doing lately. Uh, like horoscopes, I think, mm -hmm. are very fun. Um, so that's something that we do. So how can people, how can your patrons take advantage of the Bookoscopes program? Well, um, right now it's just, uh, it's a weekly column for, or not a week, I have a weekly column for the Cecil Wig and mm -hmm. for the blog um, uh, on the website. But I do it monthly, monthly bookoscopes, and you right. can check them out on the blog, um, in print um, in the Cecil Wig, or you can come into the library and you can find me. Really? <laughs> if, With your crystal ball? Uh, <laughs> I sometimes have it at my desk, but you know, I try only I just for special occasions. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's available. Um, we also have it on you know our Facebook page, so that's also an option. Very cool. So I'm a Taurus, as are you. <laughs> yes, yes. When's your birthday? May 6th? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Um, I love Tauruses, and it's not just because I am one, <laughs> but I think that they are very fun. Um, one of the books that I recommend for Tauruses is that, you know, we are <laughs> kind of stereotypically very into food. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> and wine. <laughs> and and kind of the luxurious um, aspects of life. Mm -hmm. I and thought you were gonna say stubborn. Oh, well that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're stubborn. Yeah, I'd say we're stubborn. Well, maybe you're stubborn, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not that stubborn. <laughs> what is your favorite part of your job? I think that, I mean, I love doing reader's advisory, obviously, um, and but I really love doing bigger initiatives and right now we are doing winter reading yes yes we're doing our first uh, with adult winter reading mm -hmm. and it's something that we started because summer reading we we noticed that we really tend to concentrate on teens and children because that you know that's who's coming in the summer but our adult readers they read year round. just as much mm -hmm. yeah re year round and 
we wanted to do something special to kind of acknowledge that we have this community. So we have this program. Um, basically, if you log 10 hours of reading, and we've sort of expanded what we think of as reading. So it's reading books and mm -hmm. listening to audiobooks, but we've also included, you know, reading newspapers or magazines or like long form articles online or even listening to podcasts because I think that um, the way that we think of reading and the, what I value about reading is that it can help you sort of, um, you know, people think that you become smarter while mm -hmm. reading, but it also just, you know, it it's a way of... Um, Empathizing? Kind of empathizing, yes, yeah. It helps you develop empathy and it also just, there's just a lot of benefits. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that that's why I wanted to expand that portion of, of reading and, and the county also wanted to do that too, so <laughs> it worked out. Um, so after you hit 10 hours, then you come in, you get a limited edition tote bag that um, it was donated by the newly established Friends Foundation of the Cecil County Public Library System. And then you also get a chance to win two tickets to the Milburn Stone Theater. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cool. those are vouchers that can be used for any of their shows. So that's an awesome incentive. Yeah. So how, how can people log how much they read? They can come into the branches and get a, a physical log. Um, and there's like a calendar on the back. Mm -hmm. And you can track the, the time that you spend reading. Or you can go online. We have this, um, it's a portal called Beanstack. And it's mm. available on our website. And you can kind of log in, create an account, and then you can log the time you spent reading. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty handy because you can write, um, you know, you've been reading for 20 minutes and then you, like the newspaper for 20 minutes, you read a book for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and then it'll automatically update the time, and it gives you badges. It's it's um, a fun little incentive. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here, and I can't wait for our next our <laughs> next segment with you. Yes. Thank you. Why should you advertise on Cecil.tv? Because it is a totally new and unique way to reach the thousands of viewers that watch our programming. Plus, you'll be helping us grow as we expand our coverage. We have exciting plans and your business or organization can be part of it. You will find our packages and rates to be refreshingly affordable. And we'll work with you to create a fresh and dynamic ad that says and shows what your business is about. Ask us how to get your commercial produced for free. So contact us on our website, Cecil.tv, or send an email to info at Cecil.tv. Thank you. A few weeks ago, we stumbled across Emma's blog called Bohemia Avenue. It's a rustic, chic, home decor and lifestyle blog. So I had to bring Emma into the studio to talk to us about her own um, decor and lifestyle tips. So Emma, thanks so much for being here. Pleasure meeting you, Allison. So uh, your most recent post is about tips for the beginner thrifter. Mm -hmm. And I think that thrifting, the idea of getting into thrifting can be super intimidating. It, to someone who who is not used to it, who like maybe looks for sales, but um, isn't doesn't make a hobby of it, and so I how what tips do you have for somebody who's who's brand new to it? So a lot of people do ask me how to thrift. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, can I go with you? And <laughs> I love spending time with people and, and going thrifting with them, especially with my parents. I go with them often and then my friends as well. So I think that um, when I covered it on my blog, one of the big things that I talked about was to avoid wealthier neighborhoods, which a lot of people would think, oh, this is this neighborhood is known for their expensive houses and people who make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it's actually the opposite. You're going to find better bargains if you go to stores that um, are in smaller towns. And that's because really? a lot of times um, companies will distribute, especially if it's a chain, they'll distribute their donations. So what you may, what may be donated to one store is going to be donated so that all stores have an equal um, amount of product on their shelves. That's really surprising. Mm -hmm. I think I always thought it was the opposite, that you should go to wealthier neighborhoods or big, large suburbs 
to find great thrift stores. That is that is incorrect, <laughs> actually. So I would definitely would recommend, that's one of my biggest tips, is to um, try to find the, the small town stores. And I mm -hmm. don't even want to say you, you know somebody that's poor or anything. Mm -hmm. Just the smaller town stores are usually just absolutely filled with bargains and little treasures that are, are uh, very decently priced. Right, right. So when you walk into a store, what's and what do you suggest people do for the first thing they do? So the first thing that I personally do is I walk around the entire store. Um, I will identify where different things are in the store. Mm -hmm. So if it's women's clothing or shoes or men's clothing or furniture or home decor, I, I want to know where it all is and what I'm dealing with because each each thrift store is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, so I always do a, a once around before I grab uh, a cart or even a basket oh, or wow. even before I let myself grab anything off the shelves. I always do a once around because I want to see everything that's there. Okay. And what do you look for when you're, say you're in the, in the women's clothing section, what do you keep an eye out for? The labels. <laughs> I look at the, I will flip through racks and just keep flipping and then I see a label. Um, a lot of stores you're just going to see so many different things in there and some of them are great bargains and some of them are not. Mm -hmm. But I personally get really excited when I see something on the rack that is Kate Spade or right. Tory Burch or Free People. Um, I found every, all kinds of different brands, um, Talbots and um, those are, those are probably some of the bigger ones that I found that I just get really, really excited when I yeah. see those tags for you know 80 to 90, 95% off retail. Okay, so say you find something that um, you like, you like the look of it, you think, oh, this, this particular thing would look great in my house, but I hate the color. What do you, what do you suggest? So that's another thing that I always look for, is if I am looking for something specific, say a dresser, or for a long time I was looking for a buffet table that I did find, mm -hmm. and you can see that on my um, blog or on my Instagram account, um, I look at shape, and I look at the quality of furniture, mm -hmm. um, and I look at the detail. So I love going to antique, antique stores and thrift stores and just looking at the different things because there's so much detail. Um, so that's what I look. So anything that you buy can pretty much be painted yeah. the color to match your decor. So you have to look beyond color and you have to start looking at the quality of furniture um, or, or um, clothing or something like that and then um, think that you can probably paint it to match your decor. Cool. Well, we'll have to have you back to talk about exactly how to do that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd love to be back. Show you guys. But, and before we let you go, I wanted to ask you, how did you get into this? What, how did you get your start blogging? So I've read blogs for years and years and years, and I've always admired them. I really wanted to start my own blog uh, for the longest time, but I wasn't really sure what to talk about mm -hmm. because I love fashion, but I'm not a fashion blogger. I love makeup and beauty products, but I could never talk about it. Um, and one day I shared some pictures of my apartment on my Facebook account, my private one, and people went crazy over it. And it was kind of really weird to me, but then I, I thought, you know, I might be onto something. Um, and then people would come over and they would talk about, um, you know, ask me where I purchased my things if I told them how inexpensive I purchased mm -hmm. it for. And that's kind of how I got started is I was like, I want to tell people where I'm finding these things on the side of the road and how to do it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not just luck. It is a little bit of luck, but it's also just having an eye for it. Yeah. And just, I love teaching people how to have that eye. Cool. So Emma's blog is called Bohemia Avenue and she has a website and you're also on Instagram, Pinterest. And you, Facebook. And mm -hmm. Facebook. Yep. So definitely check her out, and we're super excited to have her back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? And now for music and more, welcome to St. Mary Ann's Cabaret Crew. Oh, what an exciting night we're going to have tonight. <laughs> With the music and more, we have director Steve McBride, who was here, what, last week, two weeks two ago? Weeks ago two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And we have Eileen. Yes. And Marion. 
two of the singers with the show. Tell us about this show that's coming up, Steve. So the show is Broadway on Main on Saturday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. at St. Mary Ann's Episcopal Church, 315 South Main Street. It's a... In Northeast. Well, of course it's in Northeast. Yeah. We're in Cecil County. <laughs> All of Cecil County is 315 Northeast. South Main Street in Northeast Maryland. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, along with these two ladies and another three or four performers, are presenting a whole evening of classic Broadway show tunes. We'll be accompanied by my jazz trio, and there's also a, a full menu of food available for purchase. And this is the Parish House? This is in the Parish House at St. Mary Ann's. Great venue, great venue. It's wonderful. You've performed on the steps of the Parish House. Yes, times. I did with, uh, with John, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and he did a stump speech, and it was very great. He stood up on a stump, and it was great. Uh, it's going to be very entertaining, and you ladies come from a wide variety of backgrounds to actually join up with Steve. Now, Eileen, you're very you're very interesting in that you come from a very sedate and subdued line of work, right? Tell tell our viewers what you do. I'm a detective. I specialize in finding kidnapped children, missing persons, and biological parents. With thank the Lord above a 98 percent success rate. That's but great. music makes me tick. That just pays the bills. Well, it's a good way to stay chilled, too, I guess. Yes, it is. And uh, Marion, you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you made your own necklace. I did, yes. I'm a beekeeper, a barista, Cecil College student, among many, many, many other things. <laughs> so music is the common denominator. Yeah. It is, and uh, I'm a music educator and the director of music at St. Mary Ann's. I was also recently privileged to work on a production of The Producers at Milburn Stone Theater, where I met uh, Marion, and uh, who, who played a number of, of, of yes. comedic roles, and through some mutual friends, uh, met Eileen, uh, who recently starred as Mrs. Potts in MST's production of Beauty and the Beast. So I'm surrounded by wonderful performers, great talent, lots of connection to Cecil County, uh, and, and we've only got 100 seats, so space is limited, but we want to fill the house up. The menu includes pulled pork and ham and cheese sliders, farmer potatoes, casserole, homemade desserts. Ooh. So, I'm <laughs> we, hungry. we may not get to the show. We may just sit and, 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 and eat for, for the whole time. Uh, but wonderful, wonderful, great music. It promises to be a real entertaining evening. It and sure it's does. free. It's free to the public. All you have to do is come and give us a free will offering to benefit the music ministry at St. Mary Ann's. That sounds awesome, and it sounds like, the only thing that could be better right here than this buildup would be to have an actual sample of a little bit of the music. Well, we are ready to do that for if you If we have to. Let's do it! All right. <laughs> All Thanks. right. I'm Eileen Law Stewart, performing Maybe This Time from Cabaret, accompanied by Steve McBride.
the girl upstairs <laughs> wakes me unawares blowing down from some